So as I'm recording this video, we've just heard a few days ago that lockdown is being extended for a few more weeks at least. And I've been thinking about the fact that we're actually living through quite a significant piece of history. And one thing that is probably quite nice for all of us to do is to take more photographs at home at the moment. So you can document for your children and for yourself what life was like when we were living through this time. So I'm going to put together a series of short videos to help you if you'd like to take photographs of your baby or your child at home during this time. And I hope they help you to document this little piece of history for your family. So this is the first video and in this video I'm going to talk all about light. So why have I decided to talk about light in this video? Well, actually light is everything when it comes to photography. The word photo actually comes from the Greek word for light. And if you change the light in a photo, you dramatically change how that photograph appears and also how it feels, the look and feel of it too. You can use light to make a photograph dark and moody. You can use light to make a portrait soft and flattering. You can use light to just highlight part of the image. There are so many different ways that you can use light to change your photographs. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to focus on three tips that help us to use light in a simple, natural, flattering way so you can take some natural photographs of what you're doing at this time. And the first tip is don't mix your light. So in our homes, we've got light coming at us from lots of different places. We've got windows, we've got overhead lights, we've got lamps, and you might also have the flash switched on on your camera. Now that's a lot of different types of light falling onto your children from a lot of different angles. And that doesn't make the most flattering portrait usually. You've also got the problem that all of these different lights are probably all slightly different colours. So you can get really warm light from light bulbs, you can get different coloured light coming through the window at different times of day, and then you've got the light from your flash. So what I suggest is just choosing one way that you're going to light the person in your photograph. So you can switch off all the lights in your house, switch off your flash and just use the window. Or if you want to use a lamp or something else, then shut your blinds, close the curtains and use that lamp instead. Second tip is to switch off your flash. When a professional photographer uses light, they usually modify it or change it in some way. They might use something to make it softer or they might not even point it directly at the person they're photographing. And all of that changes the way that the light looks. The trouble with our phones and point and shoot cameras and even the pop-up flash on DSLRs is that they're pointing right at the person you're photographing and they're usually quite bright, harsh, not really flattering light. So wherever possible, I'd recommend switching off your flash and rely on the light from elsewhere instead. And if it's during the daytime, then I'd always choose to rely on the window light than anything else. And then the final tip is to put the light source behind you so that the light source is behind you and the person you're photographing is in front of you. Now you can put the light in lots of different places in photographs. Photographers might choose to put it from the side, from above, even from below if they want a certain effect and they might even put it behind the person they're photographing sometimes. But generally if you're at home and you just want to take a nice picture of your children you really can't go wrong if you put the light source behind you and your child or your baby in front of you. So if you look at these photographs the first one is where my daughter has got the light behind her and obviously the light is lighting up behind her and we can't see much of my daughter. If you take a look at the difference in this second photo, the light is behind me and it means the light is falling onto my daughter so we can see her nice and clearly and she's the focus of the photo. I really hope these tips help you as you're photographing your children at home. As always, if you've got any questions, please do ask in the comments or send me a message. I'll be back next week with part two and in the meantime, you can find more tips for photographing your children over on my website at clairemurphy.com slash learn.